Hi guys, Rashida Clark here with Berkshire Hathaway and wanted to come in and do a video about pricing. So how are properties priced when they actually go on the market, right? How do sellers actually figure out what, what they should be, how much they should be priced? There are, I'm going to list four things for you guys, four things that generally are used to price properties. And I say generally because there can be several things. Depending on your market, there are lots of different factors that happen in every market, which is why I always like to say real estate is localized, meaning that it can change by city, it can change by neighborhood. When you hear the national stats, they really are not a good indicator about what your market specifically is doing. So let me give you my four things. Number one is usually location. And location can include the neighborhood, the school zones, um, shopping. If you're close to like a lot of commercial, the mall, um, new town centers are popping up a lot of places. So that is included in um, location, whether you're close to the interstate or a lot of um, employers in that area, whether it's waterfront or if there's some other amenity, local amenity there that's important in your area, that can uh, be included and affect the pricing. So location is number one. Condition. Condition can mean two things, really. Either we're talking about whether the property is in good functional or mechanical condition, basically, or structural condition, or if it is in good condition overall, whether it's been updated or not. So sometimes it gets a little confusing with my buyers and my sellers as to when I say condition. So I'll give you a good example. I have a buyer who wants a home that's not new. We have a lot of older homes in our area. She prefers a home that's older because they have a little bit more character, right? So she likes older homes. We found one, it's move-in ready, but it's not pretty. The kitchen needs to be redone. The rest of the house is in good shape. So as far as the mechanical and the functional, uh, the aspects of the house, the structural aspect of the house, the house is in, in fine condition. There's, there's nothing wrong. I mean, other than maybe some minor things here or there that would be taken care of doing a home inspection, but there's nothing wrong with the property. Now, it's not updated. So in that, in the, in that aspect of condition, there are some things that she probably will want to do to the kitchen um, while she lives there that she needs to take into account. So in that, in this case, in, in particular, the property is actually priced right. Um, it's, it's underpriced. It's one of the lowest priced in the neighborhoods because he, the seller is probably aware that the kitchen is not updated. Okay. Even though the property is in good condition, it's not as desirable because the kitchen isn't updated. Um, so that's number two condition. Size is number three. In general, things are still priced by um, by square foot. So generally, you know, we can kind of look into neighborhoods and we or realtors that work in your area. They know, you know, a certain neighborhood usually sells about one hundred and fifty dollars a square foot or two hundred dollars a square foot, give or take. That's a generalization. And last number four is market conditions. So that means, is the market good? And there's lots of different, you know, thought processes and things about whether the market is good or whether it's not. Typically, if it's a seller's market, and a seller's market basically means that sellers have an advantage um, because the market is in their favor. If it's a seller's market, sellers are usually um, more aggressive about pricing. In, in other words, they price the properties um, so that they are in, in a, a place to be in, a, in an advantage, if that makes sense. So they can be a little bit more aggressive on pricing, meaning they can push the price. They don't have to maybe um, pay as much in closing costs. They don't have to bend in, in, and pull as far as uh, everything that the buyer is asking for. In a buyer's market, it's the opposite. So the buyers have the advantage, if you like to call it that. Um, usually in a buyer's market, prices are a little bit more lax. Uh, things are maybe a little bit more affordable and buyers can expect to get some of their closing costs paid, um, a lot more repairs done maybe from home inspection and, and that kind of thing. So the market condition determines whether um, so it's the price. The other thing that I want to talk about with market condition is right now it's fall. Technically, it's not winter yet. Yeah. So technically it's fall. 
in the cooler months, prices tend to um, relax a little bit. So I always tell people who get out of the market, you know, if you've been in the market all summer, you haven't found something, it's not necessarily a good idea to get out of the market in the fall or winter because there are less buyers in the market. So that's less competition for you if you're on the buying side. And then also the sellers who needed to take a price reduction all summer and spring and never did usually take that price reduction in the fall and winter so that they can go ahead and get their home sold. So um, no co less competition and the prices are a little bit more affordable. Fall and, and winter are a good time to buy. The other thing I want to add as a bonus. So let me give you my four again. Location, condition, size, and market conditions. So those are generally how we price properties, okay? We as in, as in realtors, generally. And there's a lot of data and different things that goes behind that, but I'm just kind of giving you a, a general. Um, the, the fifth thing I want to give you and the bonus is desirability. So desirability could encompass a lot of things and can kind of shift these, these different aspects in different ways. You know, if you've got particular school zones that are more desirable than other school zones in your area, those properties are going to sell much faster and probably for a little bit more money than other homes. Um, if you've got a, a home that has the greatest kitchen, you know, in the neighborhood or in that whole area or has the biggest plot of land, for example, or has the best waterfront view. Um, all of those things are, go into desirability and could affect the pricing in you know different ways. So you guys, I hope that's helpful. It's mainly geared towards buyers, but sellers can also take a lot away from it as well because you know that kind of gives you an idea when you sit down and talk with your realtor about how we are going to be pricing and suggesting pricing to you. Um, I'll try to do come in and do a seller's video later, but, uh, for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Post your questions down below. I'm happy to answer them.